Now for the conclusion from last week's episode. I've always wanted to say that. We are breaking down the middle tank that I have just, oh, I could not wait to break down this tank. And there were a few little shrimp left that I had to just start draining the tank and then locate them afterwards. Just a couple left and there we go. Just one single rock left. So excited to finally be done with this tank. But I'm gonna tell you, you may see it somewhere else in the future. This is the state of affairs. I have drained, uh, as you can see, most of the tanks with just a little bit of water left in there. Everything that I could gravel back out there, I, I did. And then they will get carried to the uh, outside, the backyard, get drained there. But I can't wait to drain this one. I'm gonna, I actually am gonna leave the fish in here. Just drain it three quarters of the way. It'll be interesting to remove it from the top shelf, but I personally don't like this tank, but Mr. Primetime does. I have some plans, we'll see how it works out. But I'm bringing you along for the good, the bad, and the ugly. This tank is a scape that I had high hopes for. I had a lot of plants just kind of hanging out in here along with my green neons. But I do have an idea what I want to do with a lot of these plants. We will see if my plan works out. I'll probably do with this tank is remove the plants first, which should be interesting. A lot of the plants are not attached. They're just kind of free floating or wedged somewhere. And of course the ones in pots are easily removed, but I'm going to remove the plants first, I think, and then go in and get all the inhabitants out. Time to drain the rummy nose tank. Couldn't wait for this, but those, those huge rocks that are in there. Um, I just I just don't like the scape. Half of it is rocks to me. Looking on the left hand side, the other the right side is kind of you see the driftwood first, Anubius on the right, and then on the left you kind of see more of the crypts on the left. So it just to me it was just kind of like a half and half tank along with that middle that little pathway that you see that goes through. It became kind of like a dead zone. It collected a lot of debris. Here's some of my little inhabitants loving life. And I just, I can't wait to uh, switch it up. We'll see how it works. Oh, there it is. It's gone. But where did it go? <laughs> the tank was so heavy that between Jason and Eli, they couldn't get it down. So th I just unfortunately had to take a bunch of the rocks out. Whoops. Here it is. It's in its new home on the other side of the fish tank. I had to fill it up. It's a mess and at this point I said oops but that's what happens when you break down a tank and then you know what I just don't remember where all the rocks went darn it wink wink so we'll see we're just gonna see how it turns out but I am very anxious to basically rescape that tank now for the final tank my green neon tank it's time to remove all of the plants the little potted plants are super simple to remove I think I'm probably gonna put the java ferns where I have other java ferns in the low boy. This big bunch of bulbitis came from my candy cane island tank and it has been growing and growing and, and it's just become a happy little mass. I'm gonna keep that all together. Probably next week you're going to see the rummy nose tank, how it looks now, which is, I would can kind of call it shocking, messy, really horrible, but It'll transform. I'm very excited about it. But I do have a lot of little pumpkin shrimp in here that I have to be careful about. Now, the Nubius that I have in the back, along with some of the Bacopa, which Bacopa can kind of be a stinker. They kind of tend to float up in my tanks. Gravel helps it better, but you see that comb. I like that trick, especially for holding a Nubius in one place. If you don't want to attach it, you just want it to stay put. It worked like a charm because the Anubius never did move. I, I got a, a couple little bonus bunches of bulbitis. Happy about that. Rotella rotundifolia I have in here and it has gotten super tall. Had nice little red coloring on the on the tops there. Even if I break it, I was trying to be really careful, but even if I would break it, stem plants, you just snip it off, replant it. So I'm gonna be happy in the new tank to replant, I'm gonna cut them and then replant and have a whole bunch more. Some 
kind of miscellaneous. I got uh, a few little buttes. I have some uh, micro sword and then a little bit of Anubius on a rock. Removing all the little baby crypts. I'll keep those together. Hopefully they won't melt too bad, but they're small. Even if they do, not a big deal because they're not going to make a huge impact anyways at the size that they are. It does create quite a mess, but it's the only way that I can get to the little inhabitants. Otherwise, they just hide behind all the plants and I can't get them all. After the tank settled down a little bit, I pulled out some more of the hardscaping. Some random rocks. This ne was never uh, an aquascape tank. It just became kind of just random little items that were either in here before, maybe that I added just to give the, the shrimp stuff to hang out with. And oh, couldn't wait. I wanted to do this on camera. Get rid of my fake moss ball. Don't like it. Now you have to be careful. And when I was removing any rock or driftwood, I made sure to turn the wood over and look at it very closely to make sure there were no little plecos or big plecos. My pumpkin shrimp are actually really good at hopping right into the net. Really helpful when you're trying to break down a tank. But I did leave all of the veil in the tank. I'm not going to forge it and use it elsewhere because we have so much of it. I'll drain this later. This was pretty much my entire Labor Day and I was tired. But for all of you who wanted to see some tank breakdowns, there you go. I hope it was satisfying and look forward to the Rummy Nose Rescape next week.